the movement for white supremacy, the hate movement for white supremacy has been for years and it's just growing. Let's just real quick before you respond, let's play that clip of Corey. We have it. Madam Speaker, St. Louis and I rise in support of the article of impeachment against Donald J. Trump. If we fail to remove a white supremacist president who incited a white supremacist insurrection, it's communities like Missouri's first district that suffer the most. The 117th Congress must understand that we have a mandate to legislate in defense of black lives. The first step in that process is to root out white supremacy, starting with impeaching the white supremacist in chief. Thank you. And I yield back. Mm. Woo. Fire. Fire, fire, fire. A, sh- a shout out to the Congress- Congresswoman from, the, from, from Missouri's first district and also one of our hardest, hardest representatives of like everything that we are embodying and we've went through for the past, t- t- past I don't know, 400 years as black people. Check this mm-hmm. out. This woman got to be the first person who said white supremacist in chief in Congress, like on the floor of Congress. You know how gangs- Week one, <laughs> week one. <laughs> week one, like, yo, how about this right here? Hello, where's the coffee machine? He's a white supremacist. That is, that is, so, that is so amazing to me. And, and no, me, I wanna, I wanna say something. We, are, we have an opportunity to reverse the Lee Atwater Southern strategy right now as Democrats. Can you, can you explain what that was just for folks who may not be aware? Yeah, so the Southern strategy was very simple, right? Lee Atwater in the 80s, he was a very, very smart, yet racist uh, Republican strategist that were that was responsible for Reagan, that was responsible. He, he died very young. Uh, um, but, but what he did was he said, okay, there's, we can't just call them the N-word anymore, right? We have to replace that with things like uh, welfare queen. We have to replace right. that with, uh, we can't say, you know, we, we want to be, we want to get the police on folks anymore. We want to say we believe in, in crime and punishment. We believe in law and order. So he used these catchphrases instead of just saying the N-word, basically to make America say the N-word without saying the N-word. Right. Right. right? And that was right. his strategy. And, th- and, those, and those, he was the inventor. He, he weaponized dog whistling at the level that we see right now. Here is our moment to weaponize dog whistling. What I want to see from white folks right now, what I want to see from them right now is to be like, you know what? This is one of those run up in the capital types. We don't have to say white supremacists. We could just say, you just run up in, you one of those run up in the capital types. You know, he's one of these insurrectionist types, right? Like, and, and from, and from okay. president, to dog catcher, every single Democrat running against the Republican needs to use that terminology. Like, like uh, the, uh, radical liberal Raphael Warnock. Well, that actually increased our votes. Thank you, Raphael Warnock, for being a radical liberal, right? Now go up there and vote for Medicare for All. Now go up there and vote for re- re- reparations. Right. The, you know, like that's, the, we want to see that, right? But right. we want to see us use those talking points. And, and I think everybody who's watching the show right now should just parrot that. Parrot I love that. it. I nope. love that. I, you know, for those of you guys who don't know, I was on, on your show last week and I immediately, after you gave me the job of, of, of evangelizing to white people <laughs> <laughs> and I did a, a, an entire opening on it and I got wrecked from like some people on Twitter, but like, screw you. If you don't understand that these stimulus checks aren't going to solve white supremacy, I'm not saying no stimulus checks. I'm saying there's no, you, you can't do one or the other. It's reparations, which is what we talked about in your show, is is the way. And that is exactly linked to the financial aspect of this. It's exactly linked to economic uh, equality. It's through reparations, specifically to the communities that have been affected the most by these racist policies that we have, the legacy of racism, whether through reconstruction or, or before, um, it, that I mean, that is the path. So, so before we go to the next clip, which is cuckoo for cocoa puffs, um, I want <laughs> like that's the only line I could come up with. I'm like, I, I watched it and my jaw dropped. <laughs> <laughs> give, us, give us your take on reparations because anytime I have an opportunity to give someone the platform to do so, yeah. It, well, it's, it's it's this simple. Um, America has to address two of its original sins that we are now still dealing with the repercussions of slavery today. Like, don't ever get this wrong. Just because Martin Luther King went to Washington and said, I have a dream, doesn't necessarily mean that everything just cleared out and Black folks are just doing well. Until Indigenous Americans are paid their just due for their lands that were stolen, 
And until African Americans and Black people who uh, who were who were families of enslaved people get their get their just due for being enslaved, then we won't see that. What does that mean? That means this right here. First off, reparations helps all Americans. It, it will increase the amount of the economy. It'll increase how much money goes to white and black businesses. Mm -hmm. Secondly, more importantly, and this is the biggest thing, it reverses everything that has been systematically done against black people from the, the onset of enslavement. And, and y'all think that some of our greatest heroes in history, like FDR, you know, he created nationalized programs. Like if you like your mail, that's a socialistic, that's a social program, right? But here's the thing, while he was doing that, there were federal government people who were literally marking little big red lines right. in cities saying, we're going to fund this white area and we're not going to put funding in this black area. And, and when you don't have homes, when you can't own homes, when your home value is less, the, that was a federally mandated thing. Thanks for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. It's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.